Hi everybody, this is just a quick uh, video to talk about some of the problems that were assigned in 5i2. Uh, first problem of the problem set, you know that New York had a population of 7,900,000. 7, this, this textbook is quite old. Back then it was true. Uh, anyway, they give you a, a walking formula here uh, for the rate of, rate of walking formula given a population. And it's here and it's listed in example one. There it is, you plug in 7.9 million as the input, and then the output is about 5.9 feet per second. Number eight, uh, they give you uh, an exponential growth rate of 11.7%, so you change that to a decimal, put that into here for the k value, and then the initial value is 100. So this is your formula. You can graph it here, I did it on Desmos, and I made a table. You can see at time zero, it is 100, and then when you plug in seven as an input, the output is about uh, 226.8, which gets plotted like right about here. Uh, if you want to find the doubling time, use the formula uh, doubling time t is equal to, uh, big T is equal to natural log of two. Two comes from doubling and 0.117, which comes from the k value. And that equals uh, 5.9, approximately. So after 5.9 days, it'll be, uh, a population of 200. Number 29, uh, they give you this formula, and I think it's helpful to solve to uh, divide both sides by w0, so you get the percent remaining. So whatever the value, whatever for whatever value you put t in, um, that'll be the uh, the initial value is in the bottom of the fraction, and the final value uh, when for whatever value t it is, it's going to be up here. So like if it if if you are expecting it to be 50 percent, then W would be, you know, half of W zero. Anyway, so this is this is a much more useful formula to work with. If t equals one, you plug one into this, and you get 0.993, which is 99.3 percent. So that means that uh, 0.7 percent was lost. After 30 days, you plug 30 into this formula and you get uh, 0.81, about, and that's 81%. Number 35, they give you a formula, you need to solve it for R. Um, the first thing I did was divide both sides by C, so you get this fraction, and then you can change this logarithmic equation from a log equation to an exponential equation. The exponent is V over C, the base is E, and the power is R, and that's what you can see right here, and R is solved for. Uh, we're going to do a similar trick over here, except we have to do a little bit of algebraic fancy footwork first. One thing I wanted to note is that uh, when they say i here, lowercase i is usually the imaginary number, but in this case, because it's a scientific formula, it's, uh, it's, this is a variable. Uh, not 100% sure why they didn't just use a capital I. That I think it would have been a little less confusing. Anyway, it's a variable. So the first thing I'm going to do is clear the fraction, multiply both sides by r. Then I'm going to divide both sides by v. And then I'm going to add uh, this over to the other side, just to get rid of the subtraction mostly. And then I'm going to subtract this fraction over here to the other side. So we get e is raised to the exponent is equal to 1 minus the fraction here. That's good. Then I'm going to rewrite as a logarithmic equation. Uh, another way to think about this is that I'm taking the natural log of both sides. Uh, to go from here to here, you can think about it either way. Take the log of both, natural log of both sides, or uh, rewrite as a, as a logarithmic. In any case, you get this, which is which is what is, used to be the exponent, and this, which is what used to be the power, and then the base is e, so we use natural log. I'm going to rewrite this thing as a fraction and move it, the negative sign over. So uh, multiplying both sides by negative 1, you get a positive fraction and then a negative natural log. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by L and divide both sides by R. And then you get T all by itself and solved. Uh, hit me up with any questions or comments or, or anything you need from the email, by email, and um, I'll see you around.